And then whoever passes through that cave vanishes, indicating that that person did not return from there. Now the scene shifts to a woman named Anna who is relocating to a town with her family. She has come here because her years old son has died. And she got depressed as a result of the occurrence. In front of the house where they relocated, there was a deep forest, and it was banned to enter. No one was allowed to enter the location because it was encircled by a fence. Now, let me tell you that this location was none other than the cave area, and Anna's mother-in-law also lives with them in town. Anna's family consisted of her husband, daughter, and mother-in-law. Anna's mother-in-law suffers from a mental illness, although she is well cared for by Anna. Anna's mother-in-law has the ability to hear the voices of the dead, and as a result, she frequently speaks weirdly. Following that, we see two children, a boy and a girl, whose adorable puppy had gone missing. To find their puppy, they divided posters, and while searching for their puppy, they came across that cave. There was darkness in that cave, so she turned on her cell phone torch and looked inside. She sensed movement in the corner, and with it, someone dragged the kid inside. Anna calls the cops when she hears the noise. And when the police walk into the cave, they find a dead body of a girl there, along with a photograph. Anna was also in the wilderness with her husband, and she finds a baby girl there who was filthy and afraid. Her name was Julia. Anna brings her home and gives her a bath, but she notices that she has a lot of wound marks on her back. Julia was looking cute, so Anna tried to talk to her but she didn't respond. Then she abruptly refers to Anna as her mother. The baby girl speaks for the first time, and the startling thing is that her voice sounds just like Anna's daughter. Anna's husband suggests that we notify the authorities about the missing baby, but Anna refuses because she has already lost her son. What had the cops done at the time? I found Julia in place of my son, and as the days passed, the bond or attachment between Anna and Julia grew stronger, Anna adores Julia. Anna's husband once asked her, how long will we keep this newborn girl in our home? We need to send her, but Anna says no, I won't let her go, and if you want her to go, I'll accompany her out of the house. She begins to cry. Her husband tells her that she must face the fact that her kid is no longer in this world, and that no one can replace him. Control yourself, I'll back you up. Anna, on the other hand, did not agree, and she stated flatly that she would return my son. One day, while sitting, Anna's mother-in-law experiences a psychiatric attack and rushes towards Julia with a knife. Anna arrives and saves Julia. In Anna's mother-in room, the laws there was a mirror that had been completely covered. Because Anna's mother-in-law hears her dead sibling sounds in that mirror, a horrifying visage appears in that mirror, as if it belonged to a demon or a soul, and Anna's mother-in-law begins talking to herself. And she hastily begins walking towards the forest. When she reaches the cave area where it was forbidden to go, it appears like someone is tugging her there. When Anna wakes up the next morning, she notices that her mother-in-law is nowhere to be found. She confides in her husband, when he checks the mirror in his mother's room, he notices some fluid leaking out of it. Anna's husband removes the tapes from the mirror and notices the handprints of someone in it. He believes that something is wrong from the moment this baby girl comes to our home. He approaches Julia and inquires, do you know where grandma is? Following that, we discover that Anna's husband has also gone missing, which causes Anna to get perplexed and phone the police, claiming that she does not want to live here. This is a weird town, so she informs the cops that she has also located a girl from that woodland whose name is Julia. The cops look through their records for a missing report for this particular girl, but they don't find anything. On the other hand, Anna was taking Julia to meet with the police, but Julia had gone missing and was nowhere to be found. The police inform Anna that many individuals have gone missing in the last few days and that this town is mysterious. They also show Anna those photos. Anna recognized the child they discovered alongside the dead body as Julia. When the cops look through their old reports, they discover that many people saw this newborn girl in the woods while Anna was looking for Julia. She meets a lady who tells her about the cave, how a white tiger formerly resided there, and how the local magicians venerated this white tiger. When a magician worships this tiger, the tiger wants to steal his soul. However, the magician needs to save his life, so he begins a ritual. The magician throws his blood on a mirror, but the tiger doesn't like it since he wants the blood of a pure soul. The magician sacrificed his daughter, Julia, as a result of it, and they vanished. 
People began to vanish after that day, and police investigators discovered some images of Julia. They learn that the magician physically abuses Julia, and that lady informs Anna that if you meet that girl Julia, you will undoubtedly see the magician because they are tiger slaves. You should not take that girl home. That lady informs Anna that she can possess you as well and that you may lose your sight as a result, because this is the first indication, and Anna was already seeing things incorrectly. Anna's daughter was alone at home when the lady asked her to move, so she did so quickly. Her kid was listening to her mother's voice, which was Anna's voice from the mirror side, at home, telling her to come here and not be scared. In truth, he was a magician in the mirror who was calling Anna's daughter near him because she wanted to hunt her. Anna's daughter was terrified and locked herself in a cupboard. Julia said to her, don't be afraid, I'm with you, and she sat in the cupboard with her. Anna returns home and begins looking for her daughter, but she is unable to locate her. When she unlocks the cabinet, she sees her daughter and Julia, and she assumes Julia was looking after her daughter. Anna inquires of Julia, daughter, could you tell me where my husband and his mother are? With it, she prepares to leave the house, leaving a police officer's card near her daughter, instructing her to contact him if she becomes late and is unable to return until the morning. Julia was transporting Anna to the cave. There were old stairs in that cave, and they were dreadful. Julia tells Anna to go down silently, and Julia tells her that if she hears a voice, she should not respond. However, while walking, Anna's foot twists. Anna hears her daughter's voice from a corner, that mother comes here, here is a horrible man, after her voice, the voices surround the entire cave, her daughter and her husband were calling her towards them, Anna hears her daughter's voice from a corner, that mother comes here, here is a horrible man, after her voice, the voices surround the entire cave, her daughter and her husband were calling her towards them, Anna hears her daughter's voice from a corner, that mother comes here, here, and I'm terrified. Anna's heart melts as she hears her daughter's agonizing voice. She tells her, daughter, I'm coming, and then she walks towards the location. Julia, on the other hand, stops her abruptly and tells her not to go there. Then that tiger-possessed magician arrives, he was about to kill them, but they hide in a part of the cave, on the way there, Anna's foot gets stuck somewhere. That magician tries to get close to Anna, but she manages to break her foot free and flees. Then he takes away Anna's husband's voice and tells her to come to me. Now Anna and Julia were in a room full of mirrors. A hand emerges from the floor level mirror and places it on Anna's hand, holding her. However, Anna flees the scene while releasing her hand. There were sounds coming from every mirror, and Anna covers her ears with her palm because she was irritated. Because she was remembering her dead son, Anna was standing in front of a mirror, which the magician tries to drag her within, which means inside that mirror. However, Anna's husband arrives and breaks the mirror while saving Anna. Anna's spouse becomes blind, and he tells her to leave that cave. Meanwhile, she receives a call from that police officer. She was trying to tell him everything, but the phone was dropped, and she fell down again. Now Anna and her husband are attempting to exit the cave together. But the magician, who is transformed into a beast with white hair on his face, tries to pull her husband away. Anna, on the other hand, turns her husband inside out. Now Anna and her husband are walking outside when they hear Julia's voice from behind them, saying, Mother, you said you would never leave me. Why are you leaving now? Please don't leave, but Anna can't trust Julia anymore. Here, Anna has also lost her sight, which means she and her husband are both blind. They both try to move upside while holding each other's hands. But those steps were too many, and they didn't seem to end. Then she hears the voice of her dead son, who tells her that her mother would not return, leaving me alone. Anna's heart begins to melt when she hears it. But her husband tells her, you know he's dead, and he's not here, and Anna climbs back up with her husband. But this time, her kid regretfully cries, mother, don't go, and she loses patience. She takes her husband's hand in hers and says, I'll soon bring my son back upside down. As she descends the stairs, Anna runs into Julia who she hugs. They then move within the cave somewhere. On the other hand, we watch Anna's husband emerge.